What's up, everybody? Especially you, George. Thanks for watching the videos, man. <laughs> and today we're here, we're gonna look at five footwork tips that get increasingly more advanced. So you might already know some of this, it might be common sense, but stick around and you might find something interesting. Exactly. And also hit the subscribe button because we have a bunch of other long form content coming up and you will want to be notified when that comes out. Heck yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's get to them. <laughs> Connor, would you say you have good footwork? I would say no. At all levels of climbing, there's people who have great footwork and there's also people that have poor footwork. It's something that there's kind of like no skill cap to it, it seems. I think it's easy to learn, hard to master, you know? Very like, wise. You can be climbing for years and not be good at footwork and you can be climbing for days and also totally not be good at footwork. Me and Jake both coach here at ABC and Collins Collins, so. We've seen a lot of people use their feet. <laughs> <laughs> First tip of the day, I believe, is use your toes. Cool. Demonstrated by this beautiful footwalk. Whoa! So, so notice how his toes are, like, especially the big toe is right on the surface of the hold. His heels are high, which means that the calves are engaged, which is very important for creating downward force into the footholds. And being very precise and quiet with his feet. Okay. So yeah, you really just want to use your big toes. A good drill for that is sticky feet, where you push your foot on the foothold and you're not allowed to move it uh, once you touch the foothold. It really forces you to <laughs> put your foot in the right spot the first time. Guys, let's see some bad usage of toes. All right, all right. Now you see this footwork sucks balls. The side of his foot is fully on the t on the uh, foothold, and he has absolutely no ability to pivot, which means that his hips better stay right over his foot. But if they deviate any way at all, he will fall right out of the wall. It's, <laughs> um, it's, it's really not what you want to be doing. <laughs> yeah. So Jake, is there a time when I shouldn't just use my toes? Well, actually there is. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Insane. So when we have something like this big volume surface, you actually want to um, use the whole area from the ball of your foot to the tippy toe. And if you notice the toes kind of flex backwards like that just like what Connor's doing. And that creates a lot of surface area. And surface area creates more friction. So a lot of you might be saying, I took high school physics. So I know that friction is independent of surface area. Well, you'd actually be wrong because in the case of rubber, uh, rubber shears off when there's a higher pressure on an individual point. So when you have more surface area, the pressure is more evenly divided and less of it shears and slides, giving you more stick. I barely understood that, but I know that if you drop your heels on volumes, that is good. You've got distributed loads versus point forces. I took, I took statics, so. All right, Colin, what's the next topic? All right, we're gonna be talking about pushing versus pulling with your feet, because it might not be that obvious, but you like, there's a lot of different ways you can use your feet when climbing. And so let's, let's demonstrate that. I'm just gonna climb this pretty easy climb, but these feet, if you wanna come closer, you can really see like how you can really get your feet behind these holds. And also like just this climb, especially if you're a more beginner climber, like if you lose your feet when on this wall, it's gonna be really hard to like hold position. And so really getting your feet and hips into the wall and pulling with the feet is very important. All right, so uh, another thing is that a lot of times beginner climbers are taught to keep their hips as close to the wall as possible. But on steep terrain, it's actually more beneficial to uh, keep your hips low and uh, sink really low in the holds, especially the hand holds. You notice like this feels way more strenuous than if I'm just down here. So I keep my feet in on these holds, keeping a lot of tension. Now we're going over some push feet. It's basically what it sounds like. It's the opposite of a pull foot. <laughs> yeah, and so more often than not, you'll probably be using push feet when climbing. A really good example of that is volumes. Like there's nothing to pull on here. We talked about volumes earlier with like the, the question of how much surface area to use. But like, yeah, with the volume, you just try to push as hard as you can. And I don't know, Jake, like what, what are push feet good for? Yeah, anytime you just want to create a decent amount of body tension, there has to be uh, some sort of push and force involved. Um, especially like with the underclay, you're kind of pulling it, but then pushing really hard down on these pretty bad footholds. Um, and also anytime you want to generate explosive movement. Yeah, a lot of times, like if you're pulling with your feet, you're probably, you can be pulling with both, but 
A lot of times you're pushing and pulling. And in this case, this start where you start, you have left foot, right hip foot here. It's a lot of pushing on the feet and you're pulling really hard into this other foot to stay in. So, and even on the same foothold, we can have a few points like to rock over here and then push really hard to do the final jump move, uh, which you'll see in a second. It's, it starts out as a pull foot, but then becomes a push foot. Yeah, so let's look at how pushing and pulling would be at the same time. So I'm pushing really hard into these feet on the ball end, especially pushing to get into the center plane. Now this foot, I'm gonna put my foot up and pull into it to get my hips up. But then as soon as I get up, it turns into me now just pushing on the foot. So I get that. Yep. Push all the way up to finish. And then I pull here with my half to get the match. Oh man, this climb doesn't make any sense. I don't know what to do with my feet. Did someone say feet? I love feet. <clears throat> oh, I keep trying to keep both of my feet on, but it's not working. Like any amazing thing, too much of it is not good. Try using only one foot, maybe you can give the other to me. What? What, what is using only one foot called, Jake? Flagging. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so flagging serves two purposes. Uh, I'm gonna do <laughs> flagging serves two purposes. One is for counterbalance. For example, I can only reach about this far when both my feet are on the ground, but if I extend the leg, I can reach a little bit farther. And number two is uh, when one foot pushes into the wall and the other foot pulls out of the wall, creates a little counter tension, and that tension is really great for maintaining stability. You notice that flag is pushing pretty hard there too. That's a back flag. Um, so <laughs> we should, we should, that. We should <laughs> explain back flags now. Uh, basically, there's a line that goes through your body called the plumb line, and you want to have generally the same number of limbs on both sides of the plumb line. So if we're reaching left and our right foot is also... Okay. okay. So our right hand's on the wall and our right foot's on the wall In order, and we want to reach left. In order to maintain the plumb line, we must shoot the left foot backwards into a nice little back plane. Very pretty. Uh, likewise, if our left hand's on the wall and our right foot is on the wall and we want to reach right, then we reach right and send the left foot out. But now the plumb line is stable again. Plums. Plums. <laughs> I like plums almost as much as I like feet. <laughs> Damn, nice footwork. Hey, whoa, okay. As you can see, what I'm doing here is totally generating momentum with my legs, not using my hands at all. This is important because you use your big leg muscles to create the movement. And that way it saves you arm power in the future. All right, now for uh, especially down moves, we're gonna initiate with the legs first. It's very subtle, but the legs move over the foothold before his hands pull down. He's gonna move the feet up, then his hips into the wall to move to the next hole. Face cross, the hips again, move up, and just creates a little nice, uh, just like back and forth motion, kind of like the pendulum. Amazing job. So for our final tip, I'm gonna be talking about trusting your feet. And this is probably the most important thing we've talked about in this video is something to be conscious about whenever you're climbing is that like you are able, like putting more weight on your feet is gonna help you with your climbing. You don't always have to trust using your upper body strength and uh, just being like aware of like how you're using your feet and that you're making sure that you're like trusting them enough to put proper amount of weight on is really important. And uh, for me in comp climbing, I when you have a, sh a short window of time to do a boulder, you have to leave everything out there on the mat and trusting feet is like huge in this. And I'm still like getting better at this myself, but if there's like a slab move or even on an overhang and there's just a crappy foot, you have to be able to just use that in the moment, especially on lead climbs. They uh, they throw in like a really bad foot and you might not like standing on it, but sometimes you just have to trust that it's gonna stay, so. We're calling, my foot feels so insecure. I don't wanna trust it, what should I do? Sometimes a foot feels weird, but 
as we talked about in our previous tip about like generating initiating with the legs is if you initiate over so to like if you're standing right here to a foot that's up higher like you're not putting like that much weight on it so of course it's going to feel sketchy and like it's going to slip but just like standing up and sh like shifting where your weight is that foot's going to feel completely different and you just have to like be very aware with your body and what you're doing and that trusting that that like if you shift your weight correctly that you're going to stay on that foot so let's demonstrate that so this pink foot pretty darn bad but i, I know that i'm putting my weight on it right i'm going to push the foot and i take my hands off whoa it's kind of like a chicken and the egg scenario. Like what comes first, waiting the foot or trusting the foot? And you kind of just have to like pick one. <laughs> like <laughs> either one is the one that you want to pick in the moment, but sometimes you just have to wait it so it feels better, so you can trust it more, or you just have to trust that the foot is going to hold so you can wait it so it feels better, <laughs> so you can do the climb. But um, that's just something that comes over like a lot of time and experience climbing. And just if you have a foot, like maybe on your project that you're kind of struggling on, just make the conscious effort to trust that foot over and over again. And over time, you'll get better at it and better at waiting it. And you can always wait a foot more than you think. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, a foot rarely pops because you wait it too much. It's usually not waiting it enough and then it pops. Thank you guys so much for watching. We liked feet so much we made a whole entire video about them. So if you learned something new, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a like. And thank you to Jessica X for watching today's video. Thank we you. We appreciate the support. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>